morning, everyone. Welcome to The Water's Edge. Whether you're joining us online through Facebook or YouTube, or if you're right here with us in person, we're delighted to have you. If you're joining us virtually, remember to hit that like button, share our content, or drop a comment just to let us know you're here. And for those in the room, we have some important updates just for you. If you have little ones, our nursery and kids church is available right across in the lobby, providing a safe environment for all of them. In the heart of our community is our volunteers. We're always looking for more passionate individuals to join us. So to get involved, simply scan the barcode on the screen or text the word volunteer to 844-793-7384. And let's not forget, we're a welcoming space for everyone, especially those facing challenges. So if you know anyone in need, extend an invitation to join us in person or let them know about our online content. Now get ready for an uplifting experience this morning as we come together in worship and receive a powerful message from Pastor Tony. What's up, everyone? Good morning and welcome to our Sunday Morning Water's Edge online worship experience. Thank you so very much for tuning in and hanging out with us today, worshiping with us online. For those of you that continue to like and share these worship experiences with your circle of influence, thank you so very much for doing that. Continue to do that. People are tuning in from all over the place. Also, for those of you that continue to worship with us online through giving and generosity, thank you so very much for doing that. Continue to do that. Maybe Maybe by meeting our new $10 challenge, you allow us to help more people, love more people, feed more people, serve more people, shelter more people. In fact, every day this summer, we're having a cooling center and a sheltering center during the day at the church for our homeless community that Miss Kelly and Lisa are running. You allow us to do that when you worship with us through giving and generosity. You allow us to show our community the body of Christ in the hands and feet of God's love. Thank you so very much for doing that. Continue to do that. Today we continue with our summer series entitled Summer Revival Sundays. In this series, as we go throughout the heat and the exhaustion of the summer, and the summer is hot and the summer is exhausting, but also symbolically as we also go throughout the exhaustion of life, and sometimes life can just make you tired. Sometimes life can exhaust your spirit, it can exhaust your soul, it can exhaust your mind, your thinking, your feeling, your emotions, your faith, and your heart. Sometimes life is exhausting and and this study, as we go throughout the heat and the exhaustion of life, is intended to help us and encourage us because sometimes we all need it. It's intended to strengthen us and comfort us because sometimes we all need it. It's intended to revive us and recharge us and pick us back up again because sometimes we all need it. Okay, so today as we get started, I want you to think about this question. How can you and I overcome those toxic emotions that fight for control of our heart? Toxic emotions like anger. Toxic emotions like envy and jealousy and fear and anxiety. And many times when you and I have these toxic emotions that fight for competition of our heart and they fight for control of our heart and then they take root, deep root in our heart, many times these toxic behaviors start to show up in our life on the outside. For instance, when anger bosses your hurt around, hurtful words in your temper shows up in your outward behaviors. When guilt bosses your heart around, then also shame shows up on the outside. Outside. Isolating yourself shows up on the outside. Punishing yourself shows up on the outside. Living depressed and unproductive shows up on the outside. When envy rules your heart, then jealousy and competition shows up on the outside. When fear rules your heart, then worry shows up on the outside. Stress shows up on the outside. Anxiety and being irrational shows up on the outside. And once this happened, what do we usually do? 
When we have toxic emotions that control our heart and it causes toxic behaviors to show up on the outside, once that happens, what do you and I usually do? Well, this is what we usually do. We usually try to cover up those behaviors that we just don't want other people to see. You and I have gotten so used to covering up the parts of our outward life that we don't want other people to judge, that we don't want other people to form opinions about, that we don't want other people to shame. We try so hard to cover up those parts of our life that we feel guilty about, that make us feel unproductive in life, that make us feel like we're failures, that make us feel selfish. You and I work really hard to only show the other people in our life only what we want them to see, but we have to take it a step further. We have to work on the real us, the true us, our heart, who we really are on the inside. You and I all to some degree monitor our behavior in front of other people that other people can see. We monitor our image that other people can see. To some degree, we monitor our actions and our reputation that other people can see all because we're more concerned with the outside. We're more concerned with what other people can see in our life and the opinions they develop based off of what they see all because we're more concerned with our outside instead of being really concerned with the inside, what's in our soul and what's in our heart. Notice what Jesus has to say about this very dilemma. Luke chapter 6 verse 45, if you're still with me Sam's still with you. A good person Sin produces good things from the treasury. Notice that word, the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. Notice what Jesus says right here, that you and I have these emotions and these battles that's fighting for control of our heart. And a good person has good things that flows from the treasury of their heart. And a bad person has bad things that flows from the treasury of their heart. And then what's in your heart shows up on the outside. Jesus says it like this, what you say flows from the inside, flows from your heart. Now, anytime we come across a verse like this, it's very important to understand it in its most simplistic form and not just to explain it away. And so here's a very clear and simple way to understand this verse. Here's a very clear and simple way to understand what Jesus was trying to teach us right here. And this is what it is. And remember this today. When your heart is being filled with goodness because of your walk with God, then good behaviors consistently show up in your outward actions. But when your heart is being controlled by toxic emotions, then bad behaviors consistently show up on the outside. Look at it this way. You've never seen a fruit tree or a fruit vine with multiple different kinds of fruits on it. You've never walked up to an apple tree and on that apple tree was also bananas and oranges and pears and kiwi and mango. If you walk up to an apple tree, it's just going to have apples. If you walk up to a grapevine, there's just going to be grapes. But why? Why would an apple tree only produce apples? Why would a grapevine only produce grapes? Two reasons, and notice this today. Because a fruit-bearing tree can't pretend to be something that it's not. A grapevine cannot pretend to be an apple tree. An apple tree cannot pretend to be a fig tree. Do you understand what I'm saying? An apple tree is only an apple tree. A grapevine is only a grapevine. But you and I do this often, don't we? We can have anger and jealousy and envy and revenge and temptation and unforgiveness in our heart while at the same time trying to pretend to be kind and peaceful and patient and understanding and walking with God. Our lives can end up looking like a fruit tree that has all these different types of fruit on it and that has no identity. We, we can't call it an apple tree because it has bananas on it too. Many times that's what our life looks like. But to be honest with you, I don't want my life to look like that because many times it does. Many times there's peace in my life and there's faith in my heart and there's integrity in my heart and there's passion for God in my heart and there's love in my heart and there's empathy in my heart. At the same time, I'm, by, I'm, I'm fighting with selfishness and I'm fighting with my past and I'm fighting with anger and I'm fighting with pride and I'm fighting with my flesh many times at the same time. The second thing is this, and notice this today, because the seeds you plant determine the fruit that grows. If we find apples on a tree, it's because apple seeds were planted. If you find a grape vine, it's because grape seeds were planted. And when I find behaviors in my life that are driven by anger and selfishness and my past and temptation and the wrong toxic emotions in my life that produce the wrong toxic behaviors in my life, it's because that's the seeds that I was planting. I was 
was not planting seeds of peace. I was not planting seeds of hope. I was not planting seeds of love. I was not planting seeds of patience. I was not planting seeds of holiness. Instead, I was letting the seeds of anger and the seeds of selfishness and the seeds of jealousy and the seeds of envy take root in my heart. And when they take root in my heart, they show up in my outward behaviors. Now, you see that word treasury in this verse? In this verse, it gives us some insight into our outward actions that many times we wish we can change that we fight so hard to cover up. A treasury is a safe place that you keep something valuable so you can hold on to it. We put something safe in a treasury because we don't want to let it go. And in Luke chapter 6, verse 45, Jesus says that our heart and our soul is like a treasury. Our heart is that place in our soul where we hold on to things that we don't want to let go. Let me say that again. Our heart is that treasury in our soul where we hold on to things that we don't want to let go. Two questions, if you're still with me, say I'm still with you. The first one is this. What are you holding on to in your heart right now that you know you need to let go of? If you're holding on to your hurt and your pain, maybe it's time to let it go. If you're holding on to your fear and your envy, maybe it's time to let it go. If you're holding on to hate and a grudge, maybe it's time to let it go. If you're holding on to your anger and your guilt, maybe it's time to let it go because if not, it's going to take root in the tree treasury of your heart on the inside and eventually it'll show up in your outward behaviors. The second thing is this, what are you letting go of in your life right now, in your heart right now that you need to put back into the treasury of your heart? If you've drifted slowly away, slowly away, if you found yourself letting go of your faith and your patience, reclaim it, get it back, Plant that seed back into your heart. If you find yourself letting go of your humility and your love, reclaim it, get it back, replant that seed back into your heart. If you're letting go of your empathy and your grace, reclaim it, get it back, replant that seed back into your heart. Have you let go of your forgiveness and your mercy? Reclaim it, get it back, replant that seed back into your heart. Have you let go of your passion for worship and your passion for Jesus? Reclaim it, get it back, and replant that seed back into your heart. And when you do, that fruit from Jesus Christ and the Spirit of Christ will show up in your outward behaviors. Most of our outward behaviors that get us into trouble and conflict and drama and regret, we try our best to not let the people around us see those things. But why? Well, this is why and remember this today. Because we're trying to control how people see us and how they'll eventually remember us. Keep that in mind today. One of the reasons why we try so hard to have image control in our life is because we want to dictate how other people see us and how they're eventually going to remember us. The sad part about that is this though. Most people are seen and remembered for who they pretended to be instead of who they really are. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. What you say flows from your heart. How you react flows from your heart. What you text flows from your heart. What you post flows from your heart. How you communicate and how you live flows from inside of your heart. But most of the time, this is how we live. And notice this today. We try to produce good things in our outward life from the treasury of a heart that's being controlled by bad emotions. And so instead of just playing this game, this game of image control, this game of reputation control, this game of perception control in front of others, this game of trying to change, this game of trying to rid yourself, this game of trying to overcome those outward patterns that are being produced by inward toxic emotions, ask yourself this first. What are you holding on to like it's some treasure in your heart that's wrong and toxic? Are you still holding on to unforgiveness and grudges kept in your heart? Resentment and pride, you keep it in your heart. Anger and jealousy, you keep it in your heart. Negativity, the wrong opinions of other people, you keep it in your heart. This obviously will never produce a lifestyle of peace and love in your outward actions, a lifestyle of patience and kindness in your outward actions, a lifestyle of humility and being more like Jesus in your outward actions. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. What you say and what you do flows from what's in your heart. Now, on the back of a NyQuil bottle, it says this, do not exceed four doses in 24 hours. When I was 23 years old, man, I had moved out on my own, living with a good friend of mine. We were working hard to pay rent. One night I got sick. 
I started coughing. It was the type of coughing that's just relentless. You can't sleep, makes your throat sore, makes your neck hurt, makes your head hurt. It's the type of coughing where it feels like all of your internal organs are just going to come out of your throat. And I remember I took some NyQuil because NyQuil is cough medicine. So I took a dose. I kept coughing. I took another dose. I kept coughing. I didn't really read the instructions. This is supposed to work. Cough medicine is supposed to make you stop coughing. I'm coughing, so I'm taking some cough medicine. Third dose, it doesn't work. I keep coughing. Fourth dose, it doesn't work. I keep coughing. Do not exceed four doses in 24 hours. But this is cough medicine. I'm still coughing. It's supposed to work. So I keep doing the same thing, trying to get different results. I keep doing the same thing, trying to get different results. I took another dose. I took another dose until I poisoned myself on NyQuil. Had to go to the hospital. I eventually overdosed on NyQuil. My whole body started shaking because I took too many doses, like eight doses instead of four in 24 hours. I was trying to do the same thing over and over again, hoping for different results. And how many times do we do the same thing with our outward behaviors and our outward words and our outward actions and our outward reactions in our life that has caused so many problems, so many storms, so many tensions, and so many battles? These toxic emotions that we keep and hold on to our heart that produces problematic behaviors that always causes us to have guilt, always trips us up, always causes conflicts and misunderstandings with other people. It's like we do the same thing over and over and over again, trying to change the same battle, but nothing ever changes. So what do we do? We usually just keep doing what we've been doing, the same thing over and over again, hoping for things to change, and that's image control trying to cover up and filter and control only what people see instead of going to the real issue, what's really in our heart. And what's the same thing that we usually do over and over and over again, hoping for different results, but never getting different results? Well, this is it. Notice this today. If you're still with me, Sam's still with you. We keep trying to change our outward bad behaviors into outward good behaviors without ever dealing with what we're holding on to that creates those behaviors in the secret places of our heart in the first place. The old way doesn't work so well, so honestly, we should try something different and we should try something new. If you keep trying to do the same thing over and over again, hoping for different results, you're going to have the same battles. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. What you say and do flows from what's in your heart. Now, in light of all that, let me give you just two helpful observations to apply to our life, our faith, and our hearts today. The first one is this. You're still with me, so I'm still with you. Don't try to make your life appear good. Make your heart better instead. I have a personality flaw. I admit it. I'm not going to make excuses for it. But I think it's very common. In fact, most people that I know have this personality flaw, and this is what it is. I like to make things look good on the outside. Man, you get into my truck, it looks good on the outside, but don't open the glove compartment or a big ball of chaos is going to fall out on top of your lap. You walk into my house, on the surface, it looks organized. It looks clean. But don't open up a drawer. Don't open up a closet door or chaos is going to come rolling out of that closet. Chaos is going to come spilling out of that drawer. We are masters at making things look good and clean on the outside without ever dealing with the inside. But that's exactly what God calls us to do. And that means you're going to have to let go of some things that you've been holding on to, kept in the treasury of your heart. The next thing is this. Try something different when dealing with what causes those constant battles in your life. You and I are good good at holding on to things. And we love to say things like this to make excuses. Well, that's my old self that just makes me weak every now and then. I'm fighting the devil. I'm fighting my old self. The New Testament calls this our dead man. And honestly, sometimes I still hold on to my old dead self, my old dead man. So maybe try something new. 
Maybe try something different. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 21 through 24. Notice what the missionary says. Since you've heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him, throw off your old sinful nature in your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Right here, the missionary says it like this. It's an action that we must take. It's something that we must do. It's a step that we must take. It's a step that we must initiate. True change begins not with our out behaviors, but when we take the tough inward journey into our heart and into our soul. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. What you say and do flows from what's in your heart. Let me leave you with this today. Remember this today and notice this before we go back into an amazing time of worship with the amazing Water's Edge worship team. Appearance is important if you want to be remembered briefly by strangers. But being authentic is important if you want to be remembered by the people who really know you. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. What you say and do flows from what's in your heart. Thank you so very much for hanging out with us today and tuning in. Now continue to stay tuned in for an amazing time of worship with the amazing Water's Edge worship team. And we cannot wait to see you back next week. We love you all. I was blind, now I'm seeing in color I was dead, now I'm living forever I've been given a hope and a future I've been blessed beyond all measure I was lost, now I'm found by the Father I've been changed from a root treasure I've been given a hope and a future I've been blessed beyond all measure and I am counting every blessing counting every blessing letting go and trust in when I cannot see I am counting every blessing counting every blessing to me
message from Pastor Tony, and we sincerely hope that today's worship experience has left you feeling encouraged and inspired. And if you found a connection in the service and want to stay tuned throughout the week through social media, you can check us out at Water's Edge Gathering on Facebook or Water's Edge underscore LC on Instagram. And for a more interactive experience, consider downloading our app. It enables you to participate in online giving, enjoy worship songs, and replay messages from Pastor Tony. And whether you're curious about salvation and baptism, interested in volunteer, or have a prayer request, make your way to the lobby and simply scan the barcode with one of our dedicated volunteers and they'll be ready to assist you. Now we genuinely love each and every one of you and we appreciate you and we're looking forward to seeing you back next week at the Water's Edge where everyone has a meaningful place to belong.